Call them Mrs. X and Mr. Y. <laughs> That's it. Welcome back to the double header of the weekend. This is edition two of the Knockoff Podcast. Joined always by Chris. What's up? Danny. Hello. Special guest this morning joining us for his first time is Brad. Hey guys, how are you? Hope it's a memorable one. We all remember our first time, boys. That's for sure. Listen, signing on now. This is we're hoping you will be listening to this on SoundCloud. It's a pretty groundbreaking morning for us here at the Knockoff. We are fully accessible on SoundCloud now. So episode two will be up this afternoon, joined by episode one from the uh, Friday night UFC 201 preview and some online dating chat. So we hope you enjoyed that one and uh, throwing down straight now into the weekend. What's happening, Chris? Not much, man. Like just pretty much uh, had a quiet night last night and chilled on the couch and uh, fell asleep early and here we are. Yeah, waiting for 201 to begin now. So what time do prelims kick off? Must be the best part of an hour and a half. Like in the preview, like, you may have noticed that we only previewed a couple of fights in that. Look, it's not the most, uh, not the prettiest card, but but like we said, you know, just because a card doesn't have names doesn't mean there can't be some barn burners That's on there. It, there man. might be Ad- two total non-names on there that put on the fucking craziest war we've ever seen. As yeah. they, as they so say, you man, you got to tune in. Write write the card off after you've seen it. Yeah, absolutely. And then any card with Robbie Lawler on it is always worth a is always worth a watch anyway. So oh, we'll sure definitely be there. We'll definitely watch that. What about you boys? What are you uh, pl- What are your plans for the rest of the weekend anyway? Weekend's nearly wrapped up, so I'm just uh, podcasting in UFC today, I think, and then get your shit ready for another week of work. Fuck. That's the reality of it. Terrible to think, like, the proportion of your life that you actually spend doing shit that you don't like to do. have eh? to be a third of your life. It's be spent At working, least, right? for sure. Or I- working, school, any... Oh, I mean, obviously, there's enjoyable aspects yeah. to each and every one of those things, but, like, it's, it's ridiculous the portion of your life that you spend really doing something that you're just obligated to do, that you're not really there under your own, you know, premise or free will sort of thing. Yeah, and really it's like the absolute best hours of your day, you know, nine to five or, mm. you know, six to, six to three or whatever whatever it is that you work, you know. You work those eight hours, you come home, you're fucked. You're not, you're not doing anything productive, you know. You, those are your best hours. So, yeah. like, that, you know, your boss gets them all and then you come home and you're left to just, you know, chill or... Or whatever. So, I mean, props to people who are out there working their dream jobs or whatever. Yeah. Like, but uh, it's not it's not reality for a lot of people, you know. It's means to an end shit. Even dream jobs, they uh, novelty wears off. And you That's know. it, man. Yeah. You get sick of anything if, if there's an obligation to do it, like you're saying. But I think it's funny how much, like, being in the workforce as an adult makes you appreciate how good school was. And how, yeah. you know, if, if you were, like, you know, wishing away at any moment of that, it was like, fuck, we had it easy. And mm. that, was, that was fun. So Yeah. Even looking towards professional athletes, like, they would have off days where it's like, p- people are like, oh, geez, geez, I wish I was a professional sportsman. There'd be oh, days yeah. where those guys wake up going, oh, fuck, I don't feel like going to the gym and running around that field yeah. today. Like, yeah. Bit tired. I can just have a fight with my missus. Like yeah, uh, anything. Your boys like. are all going out to yacht week or something like that, and you're like, "Nah, I gotta, I gotta train." So yeah, that's and, it. And point. that's where you, I suppose you get caught in those John Jones spec traps or whatever, where you you do hang around those those people, and you do want to still live that lifestyle whilst being a professional athlete, and then you get done, you know, for blow and and get done for steroids, and and you know, and then it just goes down the gurgle for you, and you s- sacrifice yourself pretty much tens of millions of dollars, you know, so. We're going on enjoying, like, I was playing golf with this, uh, Brycey, actually, we were uh, playing golf the other day and uh, with a professional golfer, and I was saying, like, how good is his life, you know, he's going around playing golf around Australia and all that stuff like that, but he was like, uh, are you enjoying it? He's like, no, nah, hate it, hate it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm in a bad rhythm, True. I hate it. Ah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's another it. thing, like, uh, you know, I, I played in bands and shit as a kid, and uh, and the older I get now, the more I look at, you know, some of these sort of bands that i idolize and shit that are just basically doing a grueling fucking tour schedule where they're on the road lugging you know equipment from from venue to venue like fuck yeah there's a buzz of like playing to you know a bunch of screaming fans and shit like that but there's you know when you're a kid it's like oh, a rock star or an athlete or something like that and it's like but there's still that's the job at the end of the day you're still putting in the hours and and doing a lot of shit that you don't necessarily want to do like media obligations and mm. shit oh, like that, that we saw with conor mcgregor like it's just you know fucking sometimes too much that turned into a shit show that mcgregor thing man he made a very valid point at that presser where he came in out against diaz were you saying like brock and hunt weren't at that Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, and that Mark Hunt even said that he yeah. wasn't at it. He that's was like, it. neither me or Brock turned up to that presser event anyway, and that's the reason that they actually 
you know, cancelled that fight in the first place for him. Strange turn of events, that. We're three weeks out from that rematch. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Really, got, really looking forward to that. Oh, as is anybody in for any Conor McGregor fight, he definitely turns, you know, turns the pay-per-view sort of uh, money train on for the UFC, that's for sure. Yeah, it's going to be some exciting shit. I mean, you, you can't help but buy his confidence. And um, even though he got convincingly beat in the first altercation i mean he definitely held his own in the first round but he never looked like he never really looked like he was you know things were coming off exactly how he wanted them to he looked like a lot of his shots weren't quite landing because of the reach and he was hitting his arms i think he even admitted that in his post fight but um yeah but I don't know. But he was he was finding some big shots too, man. He bloodied Nate mm. up and and rocked him. Whether Nate Diaz sort of you know lets it on or not, like he definitely hit oh him yeah. with some hard shots. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, and I think you, you because his critique of his own performance was so on point that he was saying, you know, I didn't I didn't adequately measure my gas tank and yeah. I threw too yeah. much too was early it? and wore my arms out. You're sort of like, well, fuck, he seems to know where he went wrong. Like, mm. I, I tend to believe that maybe he could get it done the second time mm. around. If He's he uh, Coach Kavanagh has come out and predicted a fourth round stoppage for Connor. Yeah. I'd, I'd be incredibly intrigued to see if the fight goes that deep. Yeah, for uh, sure. And to see what sort of condition Connor is in there. Yeah. No, no doubt he switched his game up. I think he's confirmed in many of uh, media conversation that he's been doing a lot more road running this time than he was in last camp. He definitely doesn't, in the pictures that he's posting, he looks more like a, a cardio physique than he does yeah, okay. a, um, a mu- like the musculature that he was getting from doing muscle ups on rings and stuff like that. It's not just a cardio thing, I think like Nate's punches, like he's got a last four round with Nate punching him. So. Yeah. And, oh, and Nate yeah. Diaz will go all five hard. Yeah. Like it, really, really hard. With a camp. Run a with a camp. On the day before. Like. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. He, he is a overwhelming sort of fighter, so... C- and I think Kavanaugh coming out and pretty much saying that, you know, he predicts a fourth round, you know, TKO or whatever the hell he came out and said, sort of speaks volumes about the the game plan that Connor will take into this fight in that, that I think he will pretty much take confidence in the fact that he has used his hands and stuff like that successfully against Nate in the past and will probably look to do that but look to pace himself over the entire distance and see if he can just land the shots and not force the knockout. But if the knockout comes, you beauty. But, like, he'll, he'll definitely look to just try and outbox Nate, I think. Like, he'll definitely look... He's oh, yeah, well, he's not looking to take it to the floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he Although he has re- been yeah. ro- um, rolling with uh, that Dilios uh andrews or, or whoever he is that you know world champion brazilian jiu-jitsu dude and for, for mine man he can roll with whoever he wants yeah, yeah there's still gonna be, da- there's still gonna be daylight camp yeah you're, you're talking nate in the same room as nick gill jake shields like caesar gracie back in the day for all, decades yeah, yeah that's right for the best part of 15 20 years now for these guys dedicated to it i think there's a huge void there and uh i honestly reckon nate will go out and submit him again yes it's yeah. um you you never really, I don't know like other than obviously when Connor shot for a takedown it didn't seem like he was looking to take it to the ground at all and and you know the same in the Michael Johnson fight which was Nate's last fight before Connor correct I think so yeah and he, he put on he that lit, clinical yeah. boxing yeah. performance yeah, just that's accurate right. fucking pinpoint striking that just looked unbelievable he you know he's obviously got that like black belt up his sleeve but. I, I don't know. In my recent memory, anyway, I don't see him going for that that much. Yeah, so he just gets caught slugging it out with people sometimes. Man. And and yeah. it's like you know maybe it's indicative of you know that sort of attitude that those boys have towards fighting. Like fucking kill or be killed, motherfucker. Yeah, like, yeah. Go out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and you never really see Nate try and push for takedowns or anything like that either. He's always happy to hang on his feet with everybody. You know, yeah, whether it's Rafael dos Anjos or, you know, oh, anybody. That was a, that was almost cruel to watch. He yeah. got his leg busted up. Rory a la Uriah Faber. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Got his leg chopped up and just di- didn't make any adjustments. But you don't see Connor throw many leg kicks like that. No, you no. Don't, you don't really. He's got a lot of spinning shit and he... Like, he's got some flashy d- kicks. D- definitely, definitely versatile and flashy, but I don't really see him chop in leg kicks. Yeah, I can't really don't. remember many that he's thrown. That's I feel that um, there's not much leg kicks thrown in UFC in general. Is that because there's a big risk of a takedown? Oh, it ha- it, I'd, say, I'd say it has like, to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Depends on the person that's throwing them too. Like if you're like a Jose Aldo spec takedown defense plus a Jose Aldo spec leg kick, he can seem to just mix 
both together that he can throw them against anybody with reckless abandon. Yeah, sure. I yeah. mean, he teed it off on Frankie Edgar with them, and and he's like a takedown specialist, you know, like at a, at a power double. So mm. it just depends on your confidence. And shit, that'll be a rematch as well that we're talking about, <laughs> considering oh. he's already got a fight booked. But that's the endorsability of Conor McGregor, isn't it? Shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to get ahead of ourselves. But haven't they already earmarked um, a date for that? For him to defend his... Um, featherweight belt? Yeah, I thought they were talking about the MSG card for that, potentially, for uh, an Aldo rematch. Because win, lose, or Just draw, ru- that's where Connor goes. Him. Yeah. I think he, he has to. I've, I've even said on the podcast before that I don't think he'd go back to 45, but he might not have a choice. If he gets put away comfortably again here, he has to go back and stay in his own lane for a little bit. I, th- I think like I think he's been told he has to. I think yeah. the next fight is to have to. Well, it to just makes sense. It, he's can't, he can't sit there and hold the belt and say he's champ when he, ha- he has won it, but he needs to actively defend it as well and look, or at least look like he's making an effort to. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you really see a lot of the volume of Conor McGregor fights that have been happening of lately start to drop right off and he starts to, to take cherry-picked fights you know, once or once, maybe twice a year that, that are really big ones that he can sell big and make a lot of money on performing once on. They just start, start putting in, like, Dennis Seaver and Brandau in against him for <laughs> shots and stuff, just letting him just put away cans. Uh, like, oh, man. Seaver McGregor too. Oh. Well, <laughs> the, the 209, <laughs> fucking UFC 209 pay-per-view. Yeah. Oh. The beauty is they can't go back to that model. All they've got to give him now is just the elite of the elite. Hung- hungry yeah. fucking peeps. And that I think... I think there's like, you know, you can have the ability to say, oh, I'm going to stay active as hell after, you know, beating Aldo in eight seconds or whatever it is. But um, after a fight like with Nate, it's, that takes a bit more toll. You yeah. Need a, you need a fucking, you need a bit more time off after a fight like yeah, that. And yeah. I think that was the condition that Dana was like, you know, if he's, if he wants to stay as active as he says he's going to be, then, then we'll be willing to do this two, yeah. belt, two belt thing. But yeah, that's it. Exactly. That, that would have a big factor in it for sure. And I mean, and especially though that if, if John Jones was going to get 10 million allegedly for that, um, for that Daniel Cormier fight at 200, I reckon Connor would probably get, be getting something like, 15 maybe for like 203 or something because he would just definitely be more endorsable than John at the moment. So that that's a big number to, to 202 be getting. 202 is it? 202. UFC 202. Yeah, 202. It's not far so, away. So, you know, like $15 million in the bank, like you, you definitely wouldn't be busting your ass to just be straight back in there and, you know, like it would be easy not to get hungry. They know, uh, they know McGregor's true. such a draw on the pay-per-view model as well that they've stacked the absolute shit out of that card. That main card that they've got there, we'll obviously get into a detail a bit more closer to the dates, but it's got Cody No Love Mizugaki, Cerrone Rick Story, Magni Larkin, Rumble Teixeira, Ooh. Diaz McGregor. I didn't know they rescheduled that Rumble they, um, they Teixeira did, match. Yeah, just has yeah. To, had to push it back like, due to injury, but uh, thankfully a pretty quick turnaround because that is the probably the best fight you can make at 205 at the minute now that Jones is on the sidelines. If, 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 yeah. if that fight goes the distance, that is an absolute atrocity. An absolute <laughs> atrocity if that if that fight yeah. goes. If the it distance. goes if it goes the distance, that's better for Glover for mine. Yeah, oh, definitely. If you it know, goes like the distance, it's definitely better for Glover. Gl- Glover has ground. Yeah, like and, d- and that's can't sleep on him. But uh, I'm biggest Anthony Rumble Johnson fan there is. Loved yeah. him since way back in the day. So any fight he's in, I'm going to be cheering for him. Uh, he just just don't blink in his fights. That's the best part about the guy. Just hopefully everybody stays healthy. But um, yeah, we'll we'll do definitely a fucking a, a wrap up or a breakdown closer to the date on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been in a fight, Brad? Fight, yeah, couple, couple. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing I've ever started. What would be yeah. the most recent one you reckon you've been in? Oh, well, I was working away out in a mining town and, um, <laughs> yeah, he's a <laughs> notorious guy like my supervisor. My boss is notorious for having too many beers and then getting angry, you know oh, what I mean? Like he's like types. not allowed to drink, you know, rah, rah. So he was working away with his, uh, his wife as well, doing the whole thing anyway. We're at, uh, we're at the pub up in uh, Dysart. There you go, Dysart. If anyone's Shout out there out. listening to Dysart. North Queen, <laughs> Central Queensland. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I said something about, like, I, I must admit, I, I said something about, like, oh, jeez, your missus has got big titties, doesn't she, mate? <laughs> 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 Who has too many beers? Yeah, like? yeah, yeah. Like, ego, like, ultra ego kicked in. So, uh, geez, your missus got nice titties anyways. <laughs> He's come up to me Thanks, and said man. something. <laughs> I thought he was going to hug me or something like that. Or he's kind of come up all calm and then he, uh, 
he smacked me when I smacked him one and it got kind of broken up. But oh, oh, true. So he just came up and decked you for it. Yeah, were were you of sort of antagonising or were you in oh, your mate, mind? I, I don't know. You said his missus yeah. got super nice to <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, yeah. I can't imagine that. I guess that's about as antagonistic as I To the wrong, in, in the wrong hands, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. To the wrong guy, fucking A. Yeah, oh, yeah. exactly. Yeah, you can understand that that would be a hit or miss. It was a jest. Like, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like, mate, I really respect you, mate. Your missus tits are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, thanks, man. Some peeps like, oh, yeah. Some someone <laughs> like yeah, fuck man. Yeah, yeah but he, um, it, it, we had a good relationship prior to that. Like you know, we would always joke about you know, okay, that kind of okay. stuff. So Her titties. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they were nice titties. Though. <laughs> Living away on those camps. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like being a fucking yeah. all boys school spec. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, Sorry, absolutely mate. Yeah. is. I left the pub and I was on my way home and I thought, oh yeah, I left the pub because you know I don't like getting in that kind of confrontation. Anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah him and couple of his mates decided to follow me and flog the shit out of me. Oh. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, that's yeah. terrible. That's <laughs> I quit that next day. I love day. how you sold it as yeah. the fucking punchline. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they flogged the fuck out of me. <laughs> he did. Yeah. They lit me down. up. No, they got me. Sucks, I had so nothing. You, like you banging on the, they banged my head on the ground. Oh, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. Wow. Yeah. Was it good? I've never Lip. been rolled, never ever been rolled, rolled. like that. Like um, got stopped. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, never been rolled like that. No, it's no, never, good. never like soccer ball kicks on the ground or anything. Nah, but man. I've been involved in some like too many on, on one person type situations, getting involved in the wrong place at the right time. Yeah, and, and just being like, "Whoa, shit!" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I got, got jacked for my wallet one night, but I've never been in like a physical bash situation. Oh, really? Yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. there, Jack? Oh, I've, I've told that. Uh, I've told that story a bunch of times, but um, I don't think you've told it on the podcast. Yeah, that's true. Well, effectively, like um, one night, I was down the the Gold Coast and and just pretty much uh, catching bait. And I uh, was down at Carrara just late at night. Like I used to fish at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm just down by this river's edge just uh, just cast netting bait. And, like, you've got a headlamp on to, to pretty much illuminate the area around you. And just, like, pretty much heard, like, footsteps coming up behind me. And then just thought, what the fuck? Because, obviously, you, you're aware of what hour you're out and where you are. So, like, I've sort of spun around. And then there's this guy walking over to me. And, and to set the scene, it's, like, pretty much... December, January, so it's hot as shit, you know, it'd be like 27 degrees at like one o'clock in the morning and this guy's wearing like a complete hoodie with the hood pulled like over his face like as if he's like sort of Kenny off South Park kind of thing and he's walking over with like a bat like and I was just like, oh, straight off the yeah. bat, like this doesn't look good and um, so anyway, like um, he comes over and I was just like, tried to play it cool and just went, g'day mate, how are you? Like, um, and he's like, look, man, I'm not going to hurt you, but I just want your wallet. And I was like, just digested it for a minute. And I was like, oh, you, what? And he goes, oh, I'm not going to hurt you, but I just want your wallet. And I was just like, oh, fuck, are you serious, man? Like, yeah, I'll, like I'm not going to give you any trouble. Like, I'll definitely give it to you. And, um, and so, like, we walk over to the car. Like, and, and as I'm walking back to the car, I've just remembered that, like, I've got my wallet with me, but I've only literally, like, spent a $20 note that um that i had in there to get water and stuff on the way over so um i was like actually i do have my wallet in the car man but i'm telling you there's like no money in it i think i've got like five bucks in there and he's like you fucking serious and um i was like yeah I'll, i mean i've got cards but i don't suppose, suppose the cards are any good to you and um and he's like is there any money on the cards and then straight away i'm thinking fucking of course i'm not going to say yes <laughs> yeah man to heaps. That. Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 mate, my, life, yeah. my life savings please yeah, don't take yeah, it yeah. one of the cards are black man. amex <laughs> <laughs> just tap away man yeah. yeah so anyway so um so anyway i just like um he, he ended up like because I, I drove a real shit car at the time like it was like an 89 civic hatchback thing that it used to just fucking thrash the shit out of and um and i was like look at look at my car man does it look like i have much money and um and he's like in the end was just like hold on to your wallet man and i was like oh are you, are you Thanks, sure bro. yeah i was like are you sure man like you've been a really good bloke about this and he's like well look at you you're obviously on the bones of your ass like so just did he like, take the five bucks in the end no no didn't so no no like, take it now man i've got five, shitloads of money man yeah, take it bro. Yeah, yeah. so at the end of it i was sort of like well was i really just like rolled i don't think i was like no, i wasn't no. really jacked like no. i was just you know, he tr attemptedly jacked, but n not from a wallet or anything. I would have rolled on my back and said, look, just have the, have the wallet. Just don't hurt yeah, me. Have my ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> have it. Just have me. Just bent straight over yeah. and present yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you, any of you other boys been in, like, whether it's overseas or here, been in, like, a, where someone's jacked you for your shit? Oh, yeah. I have, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've 
one time I saw this uh, dude get stabbed. Oh, yeah, yeah, tell yeah. that story. Yeah, I was dropping my buddy off after a, after a long day, day of golf. And I particularly remember the game of golf because I was really tired. You know what I mean? So anyway, I walked out of my mate's house and uh, walked down. And, and uh, yeah, geez, it was just like this... Um, like this rough lady out there and carrying on out of the boot. It was this is kind of the front, weird of, front of his house. Yeah, at the front of the next door neighbour's house. Yeah, right. had this like oh, little okay. um, had like this little like two foot brick fence separating the two of it. You know, like a little just out the driveway. And uh, yeah, geez, yeah, she was out the front and uh, with a with a with another guy there and a kid. So anyway, they were they were rough. You could tell she was rough because she was carrying on going, oh fucking, you know, fucking, yeah. fucking, fucking. Anyway, I'm walking down, just ready to go home, tired. And this dude, just these, this car pulls up and she's like, oh, no, not these fucking cunts again. And out just walked this, out hopped these two guys. One walked over and How just How far went, from you? Oh, like metres, man. Like just a couple of metres. Like, yeah, not far. Probably like four or five metres so or something this, like that. So this yeah. car just pulls up in front of you? Yeah, sort in front of, of me because my car was parked like in between the next door neighbour and, and Right, and my so mate's you've got to yeah. get past these people to yeah, get yeah, to because, car. Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much because I was walking down the driveway and this car... It's just two dudes pulled up. I was just kind of half watching it because when the car pulled up after that lady said, oh, not these fucking cunts. I was like, you know, obviously you look over, you know, what, what's attention. going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. This dude hopped out of the car and just lo and behold, I was just watching it all, just walked up to that guy and just went pop, stabbed him right in the side. So what, just charges out of the back seat or out of the passenger just seat of the car? Hopped out of the car, just calm. He was calm. The other dude was the, the other dude was kind of like bouncing around while it was all happening, like, you know, because this guy walked over and, and popped him. What sort of um, knife did he have? A big kitchen knife. Man. Oh, a kitchen yeah, big knife. One. Big oh. One. That's what was trippy because it wasn't like just a little knife. He was just getting him. He was like... In the side. Yeah, in, in like the side, the yeah. In the ribs. Oh. It's weird because I remember watching it all and then like I didn't react at all until he said, oh, you fucking just stabbed me, <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. Yeah, and then I was like, as he said that, I saw the blood and then, yeah, just bolted, man, just... And, yeah. I, and it spilt over the fence, so it had to, I had to, like, run around it. And the dude that stabbed the other guy just was, like, locked in. He didn't even look at me because he was, like, walking around with his chef, chest puffed, like, breathing real heavily. Mm. Just full of adrenaline. Oh, just yeah. Yeah. Methamphetamine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Let's yeah, face yeah. it. You're not combat, gonna go, combat you're not going to go stab somebody without having smoked a bit of fucking no, ice before. Mm. You'd think yeah. anyway, unless you were just, fuck. Yeah. yeah, no, this guy was, like, they knew each Did other. Did they look like they were, they were roughos? Yeah, rough, Obviously, like, middle-aged yeah. white guys. Just Did like he just wearing, like, club polos and shit like yeah, that? Yeah, like, flat, <laughs> like, you know, preppy dudes. And stuff. <laughs> yeah. Did he bail? Yeah. Did well, he bail straight after? No, no, you would have bailed. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you bailed, yeah, yeah. I bailed, like... He, he stabbed him and then kept walking around to him. So did you just, like, run around them and get in your car? Or yeah, were yeah. they blocking your path? Well, the, the guy, the guy that stabbed the dude was kind of blocking me a bit, but he was like locking him on him so I could run around him, alright. But it was his mate that was kind of like bouncing around, like, and Shit. he looked at me like, you know, like, what the fuck are you gonna do? And obviously, I'm just running, Shit. so I'm doing side, nothing. Side, <laughs> side stepping and fending. Yeah, yeah, side, side stepped him. Stepped him. Stepped How good like, would yeah. it be there to just be able to go, all right, all right, all right, dink, high kick, like you're yeah, out, yeah, yeah. confident. Yeah. Stand but there. Would you though? I mean, even if you were, no, even if you were Donald Cowboy Cerrone, you could easily throw a high kick. More, in. more meaning if they had, uh, if they had circled him, sort of thing, like, oh shit, there's a witness here. We got to fuck this guy over. Like, yeah. yeah, we can't. If you can't had have, to fight your way out of yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. But to just be able to go ding ding, yeah, or just boom, to go boom, get like, involved oh, in, in random yeah. stabbings no, and just be no, like no, the yeah. hero, like. No, <laughs> but you know, if you're confident, high kick, so watch out. Yeah, if you're if you're confident, what you probably could do is just like stand there and watch it. You know, like take a step back, you know, and be a bit more calmer yeah. about it. Where but I, I think, just bolted. Yeah, I, mean, I ran past a kid and jumped in my car. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't helping anyone. There's one thing. Yeah, exactly. He was alright. He had some good legs on him. So, yeah. Fast feet, yeah, fast get, feet. get in there, get in there. <laughs> high knees. But adrenaline. The reason I was saying I was tired before was that it was amazing on how like, because it was a long day. I was exhausted. You know what I mean. I was catching up with a friend for a beer that afternoon, and I was like, oh, geez, I'm tired. Boy, as soon as that happened, I was like, buzzed. Like, could not. I was oh, so adrenaline. awake, man. Adrenaline, like, when I had you know thousand beers and all that stuff like that that night. So like, you know, like. Went from and tired mate, I've to basically like been didn't drunk sleep. since, like because I can't deal with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. 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 And now PTSD. <laughs> I went on a drinking bender. <laughs> <laughs> Gone full uh, Bam Margera. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been having three quarters of a bottle each night since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's the thing. Like, you could be, you know, the most proficient person in 
hand-to-hand -hand combat that you want to be and it's still no match for somebody who's just a screw loose and is willing to shank you you know what oh, i mean yeah, exactly. obviously if you're brock lesnar it's a lot harder for some skinny meth head to to try and stab you in the side but i think you know there's always somebody who's got that that bigger screw loose than you you know until you mm. end up with a fucking a charles manson or, or something like and, that and that's why like guys zodiac watch that movie last zodiac. night zodiac <laughs> And that's why guys yeah, it was like spare four hours, did you? <laughs> <laughs> with, with ads. Oh man, I, I went. Oh, to, no. Yeah, I went went to the cinema to see that bitch, and uh, it, I just remember thinking, like, I don't know if I was, uh, look, uh, if the devil was on my shoulder at the movies, or like, <laughs> allegedly, but geez, she seemed to drag. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, I think it's um, you're expecting a, a high action sort of like serial killer movie, but it's a lot about the, drama. Uh, the mm. sort of detective work behind it, and it's fucking. It is long. Like. I, I, I remember like first hearing about that story when I read it sort of in I think it was like late primary school there was like this little paperback novel that had like unsolved mysteries in it and was reading about like this zodiac serial killer in there yeah, I remember and it's that just book. so imagine being at the mental state where you were just literally trying to plot to pick off victims of the local neighborhood or l of the local community and, and whatnot you were just looking to kill people you know yeah that, well that it's that crazy fucking crazy fucking psychology of those dudes that they either are aroused or excited or empowered mm. by it you know that's a very different functioning fucking psychology to what we know as normal, you know, to, to get off over fucking killing people. But those sorts of flavours of human beings fucking exist. That's Man, the, great, the, the crazy thing. The, the kink with that that always gets me is the uh, the women that are writing to these type oh, of guys Ted in Bundy's jail. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Sen true. Sending him letters at home playing with themselves over like the, the thought of being with him. Like, that's, yeah. uh, so yeah. many that's women. Dark. So yeah. many women love Ted Bundy and he was the yes. sickest of them all because he was like, Killing him and then rooting him, you know what I mean? Like True, that was, he was yeah. bad, but he had yeah. fan mail, like people as he was leaving, like the court and stuff like that. Women hold signs yeah, like yeah. "Kill me, Ted." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that, probably seriously what? look it up, man. Like the, he he had the biggest like w women fan of like I don't oh, know. Yeah. I'm talking my ass a bit, but yeah, yeah. <sighs> wow, yeah, Ted Bundy, he was a sick. Girls love a celebrity. Yeah. Imagine like just being revered to like, to that sort of status, and you're a serial killer. Like that, that just shows you what uh, what definitely is wrong with certain parts of society. Oh, that's right, for totally. Sure. And it's like we were talking about the other day, like our the advancement of our species into this society that we live in now and shit. And it's like that's how far removed we are from the reality of like you need to go out and catch your food and shit and like and function and survive and stuff like that. We're just given carte blanche to just fucking all right go explore you know what else there is for fucking for us to entertain ourselves with like yeah i'm gonna go put locks on the inside of the doors of my car and fucking go get tinder dates and yeah fucking yeah. Then put their skull on my fireplace <laughs> like yeah, do, yeah. You, do, you, do, do you reckon he had a full mantelpiece like ted bundy i think he had the skulls up Mate, on the, he was uh, lining up the dead corpses on his body and like like warning, warning, but like raping like the dead body while the lady was still alive, and then killing the, like a lady, and then like yeah, he yeah. was crazy, man. Yeah. When it comes to like yeah, There's some fucking but isn't yeah, it isn't it crazy? Isn't it wild though that like <coughs> have you like read a, have you read a book on on serial killers or something? Yeah, I just like you know I like to trawl heaps of documentaries yeah, yeah. on that and stuff. Isn't, it, isn't like, it, it was an erotic novel? <laughs> yeah, here I am, got my hand, my hands are in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, the fact that we're having this conversation and the fact that you've read a book and shit, it's interesting to us. Because, Very, yeah. you know, like, we're, it's intriguing and you watch those true crime stories and you're like, oh, this sick fuck. But it's like, are we a bit of a sick fuck for, you know, wanting to sort of glamour, uh, like, you know, make an infamous or, or Something whatever. out of the ordinary. So we just, like, we're interested in it, you yeah. know? It's, yeah. it's just anything that's so different, you know? From what so we're used to, yeah. yeah. From what you're thinking. It's like the opposite end of the scale, you know? So yeah, yeah, that's it. That's and I guess it. it's good to be on a certain level aware that, you know, those sorts of things are out there so that you don't sort of live live your life totally blissfully unaware to, like, the element of danger that exists. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's, it's a doggy dog world out there and, and somebody can... You know, just rock up on your driveway at any day of the week and stab you with a kitchen knife. Your you next know? door neighbor likes killing animals and shit like that. But, like but chances are, them. but chances are, and like obviously, I, I wasn't there. I don't know the story, but you know, if if there's you know somebody that seems pretty rough already, and then somebody gets out and stabbed them, it's usually not a random occurrence. You know, it's usually mm -hmm. like Definitely somebody not. who's living in that world and is, 
you know, whether they brought it on themselves or, or they were victimised, you, you can't say. But, you oh, know, sure. if you live your life trying to sort of steer clear of, of people who bring that sort of drama and shit like yeah. that and surround yourself with, like, some fucking, you know, chill, positive, like-minded people, then... Uh, who don't wield knives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or at yeah. least yeah. are, are less yeah. known to wield yeah. knives. Yeah. 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 Cut, cut away any of those fucking yeah. knife-wielding mates of yours. <laughs> <you know>? <laughs> 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 They're no good for you, man. They're no good for you. He's just a, uh, he's a nice bloke down in Harvard. Well, he's a fucking real good bloke. He just <laughs> and he works hard, man. Dudes, he just know, starts stabbing dudes for their money and I stuff. I've known him for so long, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what about you boys? Have you boys ever been in a situation where someone's jacked you for your shit? Uh, well, no. I was involved in a. Uh, w- our house got robbed once when oh, yeah. w- whilst we were asleep in the house. Ooh, yeah, in, in, in the in the morning. I remember we'd got on the source. This is at my uh, older brother's house. We'd got pissed on the Friday night, so everyone sort of sleeping these hangovers off. We there was uh, two bedrooms upstairs that. Uh, my brother and I were asleep in and we had a buddy that was asleep on the couch downstairs in the living room. And it probably got to maybe seven o'clock in the morning where um, we've gone to, um, yeah, w- woken up at 7 a.m. to uh, the buddy from downstairs had come into the room up to check if where I was. And uh, then Tim comes running into my room going, fuck, did you hear or see anything? Someone's just taken the Audi out of the driveway. So they jumped in over the back fence, through the back door, had taken the car keys, gone out the front door into the carport and hooned off up the street. Oh, sort of bloody was it? Uh, little TT, like little fucking girl's car, like dumbest, dumbest decision he'd ever made buying that car. <laughs> like fucking, he's he's the under the bus this week on uh, for the for the double header. Like shittiest fucking queen car that he's ever fucking bought. Like po- posing hard, he went from that to a Isuzu D Max. So at least he fucking yeah. found his nutsack. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so anyway, we call we end up calling the police, and um, as, as you do in that situation, and. Uh, they're like, look, uh, we're going to be a wolf, guys. There was, this is the uh, fifth luxury car we've had reported in your area this morning. Ooh. Really? So uh, f- full syndication of... Uh, this is the fifth white car people. we've had reported gone, this morning. It. <laughs> but it, just, it, just would've, it would've been... Uh, it would, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is the fifth fucking ferry vehicle we've had. <laughs> like, <laughs> Not a wanker's car. Maybe the lady of the house home. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hello, mister. I think your wife's car's been stolen. <laughs> 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 Under the bus podcast. Like, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they uh, they turned up, but it just would have been it would have been so interesting if I had just been wandering down the staircase and uh, like to get a drink of water or the other fella asleep downstairs. Yeah, happened, happened confronted to see, him. Like it would it would have been real interesting because it might there might have been fucking two people. It might have been one. Oh, like, yeah. But it just it's fucking uh, certainly an uneasy feeling knowing your house has been cased, like mm. good and proper. Like they knew exactly what they were doing. Mm, or that somebody's in there while you're in there and you're unaware. Yeah, absolutely. It felt felt a bit weird that d- that whole day. Like it just had had a strange vibe to it. But they got what they wanted and fucking end up just putting a garage door on so it couldn't happen. Yeah, anymore. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah freaky but shit. A buddy of mine used to live in um, this big apartment building in the valley in Brisbane, and um, he used to live there with his missus. And it was a bit of a party apartment. Like there'd be random people sort of um, you know partying there at all hours of the night, but. Um, and I guess everybody on that floor in the in the building somewhat knew about it. So like this was a massive big apartment building, so a lot of people had access to it and shit. But I remember him telling us a story one time of um basically they had had people over earlier that night and um decided to tap out and him and his missus went to sleep. And um he was still sleeping, but his girlfriend got up in during the night and walked down into the living room. And there's just some dude sitting on like that she'd never seen before in her life, just sitting on the couch, just like looking at her outside her bedroom. And she was just like saw him and just froze, and was just like, "Hello." And then she, and then he's like, "Hey." And then she sort of just like went into the bathroom, closed the door, and then came out, and he was gone. And oh, then, like, obviously, like, went, went back in and, to- like, woke up my mate and told him and shit like that. And they had the police come around and all that sort of stuff. But mm. I think he he was um, – my mate reckoned that he knew the guy or something, though. That he, or Either that or he was just assuming who he thought it was on the floor or something mm. like that. But, you know, that's pretty fucking freaky. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. You know, coming out in the middle of the night and somebody's just eerily sitting there on the couch. Yeah, hello. Like, yeah. I, remember, I remember my dad was telling a story about that uh, he w- had a – car stolen from him pretty much from a motel room 
up at Maroochydore was was pretty much just sleeping in his motel room, had the the car keys on the the bedside table next to his head, style thing like in in the in the room, and then um, someone's obviously come into the motel room of a night time because he's forgot to lock the door. And um and just taking the keys from like beside his head sort of thing. Holy and then just, shit! Yeah, dude. and then just and then just pissed off with the car. And that's what Dad was sort of saying is that it was r- tricky to mentally get uh, you know adjusted to that the following day when mm. you know that you had someone who steals cars that that was that close to you know to you and you had no idea about yeah. it. Yeah, in in your sleep too, waking up roll over. There's someone there. Yeah, oh, god damn, you'd be so like you'd be out of it just waking up from sort of deep REM sleep at two a.m. or whatever. Yeah, all of a sudden there's someone standing over you. Yeah, like a, you would get a huge shot of adrenaline from that, but you would they would catch you so unaware yeah. that you would be in such a disadvantaged you'd state straight away. Pretty easy to put your lights out from standing over you like yes. that too. Just yes. boom. Flying knee. Someone right. prepared. <laughs> you're already on your back. You know, like I mean, you're reacting to, you know, them for the first time, whereas they're aware of you and mm. their surroundings and shit. And not only a car thief, but they're a sex offender as well. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Ted Bundy. My yeah. wife and I. We walked in. We were running late to a hotel once. Mixed up the room number and walked into a. You know, got our suitcases out and. Opened up the door thinking because they were going to leave the key in, inside, so we thought it was uh, going to be open for us. Walked out, walked in, midnight, two like old people are just sleeping on the bed. And I'm just like, oh, just kind of stood there, weird man. Like, no one, and closed the door. I'm like, they would have no idea that I even walked in <laughs> that room. <laughs> Wrong room, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, just like, right. oh, shit. I thought you oh, meant yeah. in your apartment. I was going to say you left the swingers there. I, I did. Yeah, I yeah, left yeah. the swing down, did I? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did that on a on an Airbnb the other the other day that we stayed in down in Sydney. Like, just um, pretty much thought that the other room that. Um, that Danny was staying in was was just pretty much his, and then so like walked in there, and then it was like the the people who lived there, the, the <laughs> room, so they were still in bed, sort of like bolted upright, yeah. like out of their beds. And I was like, oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Like, M- morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's just that's answering the ad on Craigslist. Is this yeah, the right room? Yeah. Oh yeah. She, <laughs> you weren't kidding. She does look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, your missus got great yeah. tits. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks, man. Unzips yeah. morning. Yeah. Great tits, mate. Yeah, yeah that's the. I'm that's here for the gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> that's the shitty part about those uh, shared rooms in an Airbnb. I think you can never fully relax because you, you're aware that you're like living with somebody else. Mm. I mean, it's obviously cheaper than getting the whole gaff, but. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not the hugest fan. Anytime I have gone Airbnb, it's been solo, like people renting a house out to us, so they're not. They're not there. Yeah, 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 yeah. For that, for that fact, I reckon Airbnb is awesome. Mm-hmm. I rate it. Like if you're traveling and you, it's not like you know you've got somebody's kitchen that's full of all utensils and it's like a proper place to live rather than a hotel is always this sort of like mm-hmm. version of a place to live. But yeah, that's that's always cool. I reckon when you have that sort of style of of place where you have your own facilities, your own bathroom, you're not sharing with the like the other person sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's it, and uh, w- with that, we're pleased to announce that Airbnb are now the major sponsor of the Knock <laughs> Off Podcast for all. Yeah. Yeah. Airbnb yeah. slash TKO for yeah. 10% off. But <laughs> man, that'd be a huge sponsor. Oh, that'd be a massive yeah. get for us, wouldn't it? <laughs> Fuck yeah. If you, had, if you had a big dual, like, dual living arrangement at your house where you had like uh, an upstairs and a downstairs that were, both, that were both decked out, you would, though. Like you just rent yeah, that fucker I out guess. all the time. If I was if I was working a full time job, I might be like, I can't really be asked hosting people this weekend and having to clean the space and stuff like oh, that. But yeah. if I was in a diminished work capacity, retired or something like that, it'd be it'd be yeah, a good yeah, way that's to make true. some money. I don't know. I, I don't like the small talk of things like you know the repetitive yeah, that's like, hey, enough. how you going? Yeah, yeah. welcome. <laughs> yeah, lovely when day, was, um, nice weather. Like, yeah. Yeah. Last year I was in. Do you, do you have to do that though? Is that sort of mandatory? Oh, or you yeah. just no, no. You can you can tee it up however you want. You know, you can leave the key in a letterbox if you yeah. like and oh, then, true, yeah, and true, then yeah. have no contact but they rate you on your contact and stuff like that were the hosts you know available to answer certain questions about the property and shit like that so you get reviewed on all that oh, yeah, right, yeah, but um you what can i was going to laminate a, like an information sheet that pretty much outlines exactly, sort of like yeah. where the closest coffee shop was and where that's the what local medical do. center was like, uh, like, last mm. year i was traveling through indonesia a bit like bali and the and the gili islands and stuff like that and um used airbnb pretty much the whole time 
but a lot of them were basically run by this one couple who was a, a Balinese chick and this dude from California. He was actually Chinese, Californian, however that works. Like, looks like full ch- Chinese, but speaks like he's from Cali, oh, bro. Yeah, man. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, and, bro. Um, and that was basically their full-time job. They'd sit there by the pool of any number of their resorts and just coordinate bookings on the on the laptop yeah. like airbnb styles and and you know that's that's your nine to five basically you're mm. you're available all day but you've got maybe a, a roster of 16 different properties that you act as the agent for and fuck that's a pretty sweet gig if yeah you ask me. oh definitely that'd be fun running that you could pick worse spots to be living running a Should gig you? like that man. yeah for sure for pool, sure poolside with my bintang mm. 2 p.m naughty rub like. <laughs> <laughs> lady boy on one arm <laughs> Uh, it, it's fucked that people actually go over there seeking that out. Oh yeah, you know, for like sure. Sex like tourism. Thailand's worse though, right? Yeah. Thailand's yeah. Worse. A thousand times worse. Yeah. Expat scene. Yeah. I haven't been to Thailand, but no. man, I went to Bali. It's fun, man. It was good. Yeah, yeah I, I, I really, really enjoyed Thailand. I went there for a, for a week just to like the stock Phuket holiday there, but yeah. Um, yeah, had an absolute ball of a time. Yeah, it was a fantastic holiday. Yeah, what would you? What would be the craziest sort of? Um, not like sex destination that you went there for that, but like maybe, you know, Amsterdam or something. I haven't been there, but the sex industry is supposed to be pretty crazy there, isn't yeah. it? Be yeah, Pateo, probably be Pateo, up there. Pateo, whatever that Pateo, is. Pateo, 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 Thailand, Thailand would that be Have you been to Thailand? No, I haven't been there, but like from what I've heard, and I, 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 had, I had a friend that, like have a friend that li- used to live there. And uh, I don't know, just like, yeah. I think that would be like the world capital of sex tourism, right? I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, it's right up there. Am- yeah, Amsterdam's like sort of like a different format in that that uh, even though there's probably just the same amount of girls, you know, maybe more, who knows, but there's they're beh- always behind windows. So they're always in – they're in glass cabinets that exist in the <laughs> sort so of the, bil- the building – the building structures themselves so like there's just like a red light or a purple light or, or whatever they're mostly red that's why they call it the red light district but and there's just a girl standing in each of them and then you just like stop out front of the window and then like they've got a little door that gets them into that space and then if, if obviously you're interested then they'll like come out of their little door and then like negotiate the price from there sort of thing so I'd be scared to get jacked so they're <laughs> never like even though they're up against the glass and and sort of trying to seduce you that way they're not like in your face sort of you know on the street hitting mm-hmm. you up type deal like the i would imagine sort of the thailand's uh, ab- would be absolutely that is, yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Can't, can't walk can't walk down the main street at night time after 9 p.m with uh, mm. just women throwing themselves at you yeah, yeah. and men yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Too, right? Absolutely. Lady boys and girls just grabbing your cock, just knowing that there's like yeah. money to be made here. To be just like, <laughs> oh, lucky, lucky me, like look at this choice. They're digging me, man. Yeah. Yeah. Digging oh, me yeah. here, eh? Like yeah. they love, they yeah. love me, just man. Seen, yeah. Well, that's why men are so easy to get, like because it's like you know you stroke our ego and it's fucking you know pardon the pun, but um you know that's fucking so easy to to tap into a man's sexuality whereas women are so much less inaccessible like you don't see you know it put the total role reversal and there's like a place that women go to for holiday like to have a whole bunch of dudes like grab their pussy as they're walking down the street <laughs> that place would be fucking yeah. nil chicks like yeah oi oi you wanna, you wanna come have a fuck like oi oh, yeah yeah, yeah. hundred dollars hundred dollars yeah. for a fuck come grabby on. grabby aggressive dudes yeah. chicks are just like woo Walk, yeah. walk down There'd the be beach. Some that yeah, would, walk down the beach. You just see fucking Belladonna, fucking <laughs> Tila Tequila, like yeah. all these birds like, copping it. Like, yeah. I'm sure, there'd be a few girls. It's out pretty much every like every around. holiday destination for a woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if there were no rules, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but it is true. That's a good way of looking at it. It's just primal living like yeah. that. Just yeah. like, throwback. But no, nah, that, that's why the fucking. We have prisons and shit to prevent <laughs> that sort of stuff. Like, you couldn't have that happening to people. Like, we have no. a system of laws. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, absolutely. I think once upon a time, it, would, it wouldn't have been like that. Like, if you throw it back to, like, the eras of the Crusades and stuff like that, where they're just rape going around battling. Yeah, just quite literally rape and pillage. Yeah, yeah. To a certain extent. Yeah. But I think even back in tribal days, they would have had an acknowledgement of the you know the importance of women for rearing children and rearing you know new new generations of to to help that tribe survive and that sort of thing so i think the rape and the onslaught would have been definitely like over tribal lines but i think even from early early days of you know the human animal we've been somewhat like you know in in clusters so it's like you know you have to protect your own cluster so i don't know yeah i don't know but maybe just you know you, your 
wife you just basically like you know raped her whenever you whenever you felt like <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah oh and it's you like, oh, i'm yeah. not gonna Back kill you i'm days. not gonna kill you but like yeah, there's no nod there's no little <laughs> love oh, would you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah fuck yeah you would in in the context of that, yeah, that that's did, what I meant. So that, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah, in the context of back then, you would definitely <laughs> have expected that type of behaviour mm. to be the norm. Yeah, yeah, the proverbial you. But just no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. having no no access to shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, just go rape my wife when I get home. We are live, ladies and gentlemen. At you. We just got taken off SoundCloud, so that was that was very brief, but an enjoyable stint with them. Thank, thanks. We for might need to re-record over that last part there. Some of these are jokes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think um, I think yeah, it's pretty it's pretty crazy when you think how far we've come. Like uh, you know, living in you know completely different sort of family units and stuff like that now. But it is it is a total fucking you know, something that still exists in the human psyche that there's people that'll go out there and do that fucked up shit. We've lived long enough now that we've realised it's a negative thing and, and to not do it, like, for sure, it would have been a lot rougher back in back in those early days of the Crusades and shit like that. We lived a rougher life, but I think we've probably evolved emotionally as well as everything else to realise, you know, that basically we should just be good to each other and shit like that and we yeah. should... Um, you know, it's it's easier to get along if you're not if you're not stabbing people and you're not fucking, you know, going around and, and treating women like shit as well. Yeah, and and it's weird because or obviously anyone like shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, anyone. The only sort of like actual like written down sort of rules that people even put down about that sort of stuff are like all based around religion and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, it shouldn't it shouldn't always be down to this person's interpretation of how to do it and this person's ter- interpretation. Yeah, and I think that's probably why religion came about in the early days is because we needed a structure in which to sort of live our lives in a, in a moral way and, and sort of, you know... Some it, laws. Some some laws and some ethical values of, of how to treat your fellow man and all that sort of thing. But I, th- I honestly do think that in 2016 and in, you know, the circles that I move in, obviously different parts of the world are different, but I think we are gaining an understanding outside of religion that, you know, the Jim Jeffries joke that he's like, you know, all, reli- all religion paraphrased is don't be a cunt, basically. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah don't be a and, fuckhead. And, and, and we don't need to, cool. like, you know, we don't necessarily need, you know, some sort of ideology that's formatted throughout history in the form of Christianity, Buddhism, whatever. Like, I mean, there's, I think there's inherent value in all of those different practices and teachings and, and ideologies, but I think we're getting to a point where we realise, you know, it's just be good be good to other people and you know you don't have it doesn't have to be under the guise of a particular religion like yeah. just treat others the way you'd like to be treated it's pretty yeah. simple right? well i'm pretty sure like you know it, there's even a, a bunch of religions that really even stem from the same book like i think that um like catholicism and like judaism and fuck there's even one more like all, all stem from like oh the yeah old, well old you Testament. look at all those different you know like anglican and seventh day adventist and all that sort of stuff they still have all the same characters but they like yeah. structure it in a different way like oh it's jesus was this or jesus was that but jesus is still a person and stuff like that and i think you know in my life that's where i've sort of felt like okay this religion thing's a bit squirrely like there's so many opposing views and everybody's claiming to have the single point of truth so i'm sort of you know i i p- cherry pick from different ideologies and i think you know a lot of eastern philosophy there's real you know meaty value in a lot of that stuff that you read about how to live your life in a in in you know like a a spiritual or or whatever kind of way but yeah i, I definitely don't subscribe to any set particular you know ideology or anything like that anymore i don't think and I find it, I still find it kind of uncomfortable when somebody does and somebody's really, really adamant sort of one way and trying to t- trying to prove things. I don't mind if anybody holds, you know, like a, a, you know, whatever opinion they want to themselves. But I think like sometimes when there's that, you know, like, oh, this is right and anybody who doesn't think this is right yeah. is lost. And you're like, well, I don't really appreciate being told <laughs> that I'm lost. Like, 
because mm. you believe a certain thing. It's just, you know, we should respect each other's opinions and values and, and you know, just uh, yeah. get along. I, ha- I remember recently, like I had, and recently, it's sort of within the last six months anyway, I had some Jehovah's Witnesses come to the come to the door, uh, but they were real cool Jehovah's Witnesses in that that, like I was, I Uh-oh. might have, mo- mo- <laughs> oh, they're real <laughs> cool. I've got man. him. Yeah. Might have, so might they're coming back a little bit later. We're gonna have a cup of tea. I'm Tractor mo- beam. <laughs> 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 I may or may not have been medicated at the time, and just like stood, <laughs> stood at the front door, pretty much having this in-depth conversation with these people about, you know, that they were talking about that God will come and, and save these people, and and you know, I was just having a rational argument with them, but being real understanding of their opinion and stuff like that, and they ended up just leaving. But it was like a real in-depth you know good decent conversation with some decent people but they were obviously just tied up in their own little yeah one way of thinking of yeah, one yeah, way of, of thinking yeah. yeah 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 it's like it's fucking i don't know it's a, it's an interesting thing when people come knocking on the door for things like that i yeah. remember i was sitting in my house like maybe six months or so ago as well and um somebody came to the door from alzheimer's australia and obviously doing like a door knock appeal and stuff like that and uh, <coughs> just the way the whole conversation kicked off was sort of, you can tell that there's an agenda and you can tell that like there's a pitch coming soon, mm. but it's sort of like they're trying to have a regular conversation with you and you're answering the door and you're sort of like, you know, cut to the chase, man, what's going on here? Like, yeah, yeah. And sort of like, oh, ha- yeah, like how's you up? been? Oh, what's, <laughs> what's been happening at work? Like, oh, how's Jesus, you? And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's all right. Are, are these dogs yours? Or yeah, yeah, the uh, my brother owns the dogs. Like, and sort of like, uh, wh- what's what's the go here? Oh, well, we're from Alzheimer's Australia. And do you know anyone who's had Alzheimer's? Oh, actually, my grandfather had Alzheimer's. And oh, well, you, you must know then. And it's sort of, it's this like, I don't know, it's this phony conversation where it's like, I, I just feel, Guilty you know, you all right, I'll, I'll give you a donation if, if that's if that's what you want. I mean, I already give to give to charities and I just find a little bit like the the intrusion of coming over. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe I'm sounding like a great cranky old man but oh, no, but, mate, but the format would have definitely changed in in recent history of of people yesteryear that's how they would have got donations is doing door knocks that's i reckon true. the yeah. stats would s- strongly support the fact that online donations and people who can just jump on with their credit card and and knock it out that way would do that way more than that ever would yeah i, I think, think the cold calling people's houses yeah. is, is where people are horribly sort of like, inefficient yeah, yeah. yeah it'd have to be wouldn't it yeah it'd have it's a like r- low success rate people handing out fucking flies in in the city people just mm. continue to do that and you just avoid them like the play hey, can i just stop you for two seconds and like, yeah. no, 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 hello I'm my brother how's your day going uh, like listen mate i've just done it. Eight and a half hours i'm making my way to central like yeah. i don't don't need you here in your uh fucking yeah World, world vision outfit T- take all, all open those my shit. take all those like you know people that you're employing and put that money into an online mar- marketing strategy and, and a better sort of way to to access people through social media yeah, or something like that sure. because that cold calling sort of person to person that model is old now exactly yeah. And, yeah. Th- and things like that ice bucket challenge or, or whatever it did for what exactly um, right, yeah. that that made something to the tune of a hundred million dollars I, I did I did an ice bucket challenge did you really yeah, I, yeah. I did one million yes. viral go viral that's the way to, yeah. to do anything now is put all your time and effort into that like you know if, if your marketing department is like we're gonna we're gonna invest this much money into paying a bunch of backpackers to go out and, and try and hassle people on the streets and hand out flyers then rearrange your budget like yeah maybe maybe we could get some sort of strategy like that going through the knockoff maybe some sort of charity thing to get Absolutely. viral like th- th- through our yeah. social media yeah, shit. Yeah, we, we, could get, we could get some reach for that but yeah, yeah, yeah stay I mean, tuned shout out if anybody uh you know has has a better marketing hat than us and wants to help out the podcast we're um we're more than happy to yeah, uh, to, have a to pay you at least two percent two percent of nothing is nothing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we gotta split this shit amongst and, us and we hungry and, and two popsicle sticks from the freezer <laughs> 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 Uh, well, with that, look, we're into 201 prelim time. We hope you have enjoyed the double header of the weekend. This was edition two. Remember, as we said earlier, you can find us on SoundCloud now, provided we haven't been taken down. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on, Cookie. Hope you enjoyed your first time. You certainly made a couple of valuable contributions there, pal. We appreciate the honesty on some of your stories. And no, uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was good. All right, peace out, boys. Talk war, soon. War Robbie. <laughs>